And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. And we are together again on the radio. Before I say anything this hour, you know, in the world we have unsung heroes. And um, every once in a while it's important to recognize those unsung heroes, don't you think? I mean, there are people who do things uh, without uh, any profit motive, uh, without getting proper credit. They don't care. They're anonymous. You know, many of the... Uh, I think most of the goodwill in the world is performed by people who don't put out a press release, people who, uh, who who just want to do good because it's the right thing to do. And I think it's important in my position every once in a while to salute those who try to make the world a better place and they don't seek publicity. They don't, uh, you know, come down the hall and say, can I come on and be interviewed or anything like that? They just They just do the right thing. So the person I want to salute here is anonymous, and I want to thank him. I believe it's a him. I want to thank him for what he did. I want to thank the person who every day, without fail, takes a very long piece of toilet paper. (laughs) And hangs it from the door. And and it took me a while to figure out why that piece of paper was hung freshly every day. And I finally figured it out. Because the gap between the door and the wall is so large, somebody who's afraid that someone's going to see his little tiny uh, appendage uh, had to make sure that he blocked that little crack so nobody could peek in the door. And so brilliantly, probably with his pants down at a very inconvenient moment, he came up with the most brilliant solution. And I can't say what studio we're at, but I think uh, I think the president of the movie studio ought to be, uh, you know, giving this guy some kind of props or a bonus, something. This guy figured out that if you took a long enough piece of toilet paper and you hung it right, draped it right over the top of the door, at, uh, right over that crack of the door, nobody could run over to the door and peek in. And what's great is he was not only concerned about his own manhood being spied on, he leaves that piece of toilet paper there after he leaves to protect the rest of us. So I don't know your name, sir. I know you're out there somewhere. Somewhere on this lot, there's a man who's afraid that someone's going to see his pee-pee, and he puts (laughs) a big piece of toilet paper up there to cover the crack in the door. And I want to thank you, wherever you are, because I don't want people looking in on me. This guy did this, you know, he's an unsung hero. There's no uh, <laughs> there's no brass bands for this guy, nobody giving him a press conference. I just want to say, sir, whoever you are, that was genius. And we all appreciate what you've done. And every day now when I go to the men's room, I look forward to seeing that piece of toilet paper. And it's freshly hung. You will notice it's never wrinkled. You can tell that's not the same piece of paper they hung up yesterday. This is new. Every Somebody goes in there, probably that guy who goes in there with sections of the L.A. Times or the Orange County Register, a guy goes in there and hangs that paper before he does his business. Congratulations, sir. You are the unsung hero of the day on the Tom Likas show. I just noticed that. I was in the men's room and wanted to give the guy a standing ovation. But I was sitting on the can and my pants were down, so I couldn't do that. I did the next best thing. I came on the air and saluted him. And nobody saw anything. 
want you to know. I wonder what happens if the piece of paper falls down. Toilet paper falls off. Does he panic? You know, like, like, you know, maybe the air conditioning kicks in and there's a breeze and it knocks the toilet paper right off the, uh, right off the stall. What does he do then? <laughs> Probably puts the L.A. Times in his lap so nobody can see. Jesus. <laughs> anyway. Uh, here we are What's together. Topic tonight, uh, don't anyway. write, Ace. Don't worry. I'm getting to it. That's fine. Listen, here's here's uh, why I am uh, here this hour. I'm. Cont- By the way, did Dean? Did Dean just run down the hall and do that? Right now. Go ahead and post it on the MySpace page, Dean. Go ahead, Dean. Dean. As I was having that conversation, as I was saluting this unsung hero, Dean ran down the hall. And took an actual photograph of the piece of toilet paper. Did he drop his pants? I don't know if he dropped his pants, but he went in, he closed the stall, so it simulates, acti- unless he was in there with some activity going on. Being that Dean just moved to the 90069, you never know when he goes to the George Michael Memorial Men's Room or whatever, but uh, it, it's closed the way it would be if you were sitting on the can. So Dean will post this uh, on our MySpace page so you can see the uh, the work of our unsung hero of the day. It's up. It's up. You can go see it now. There it is. MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. Go take a look and see the work of our unsung hero of the day. It's uh, MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. I'm not making this up. There's a photograph of this man's fine work. I'm sure everybody here on the lot now is logging on to see it. <laughs> Because even though I can't tell you what studio we're at, everybody here on the lot knows we're here. Everybody. Everybody. So, uh, <laughs> here I am looking at that. <laughs> anyway, uh, what am I talking about here? Of course I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Barack Obama is the Democratic nominee for president. An African-American for the first time running for a major party. I am a Barack Obama supporter. I'm going to vote for him. I'm not telling you what to do any more than I would tell you to be an atheist or what you should do with your life. I really don't care. Okay. Uh, But in my case, uh, (laughs) I find it fascinating that Hillary Clinton came in and lost. And I do believe that part of the reason is because America so didn't want a woman, they even voted for a black guy. Just so they wouldn't have to have a woman running for president, especially a shrill, shrieking shrew. So there you go. Our telephone number here, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to uh, John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. Hey, uh, I'm really shocked. Uh, I know you've uh, worked all your life really hard and got your way all the way up into the top marginal tax bracket and i'm really shocked to, to hear that you're voting for barack and he wants to raise your taxes tom well i i'm well aware of that and um i happen to see i don't really care about what percentage of my income is taken in taxes i care about the bottom line at the end of the year of all my investments and my salary put together and i must tell you that in the years that bill clinton was the president and he raised taxes i made a lot more money that I'm making today in the stock market. A lot more. I'd rather pay higher taxes and do better in the stock market uh, than to uh, constantly have taxes being cut as our economy falls deeper and deeper uh, into recession, as uh, the dollar continues to fall. And by the way, the dollar falling may sound like some boring financial story to you, but it is the primary reason that the cost of gasoline is so high. Because if the dollar is worth less, it costs more dollars to buy a barrel of oil. It's that simple. Well, yeah, that's because OPEC trades in dollars. But, but the point is, the the, the lower the, the dollar goes, the more dollars it costs to buy a barrel of oil. This is true. But then again, we don't bother to prospect for the oil off here in California. Irrelevant. Or that's, that has nothing to do with what I just said. You're, you're zigzagging off to another topic here. The point is... Uh, that uh, I I do not think that uh, being five or six hundred billion dollars in the red every year is good for this country. I don't. But but even both parties have always been five or six billion dollars. No, the they red. haven't. You're wrong. Uh, the Bill Clinton had a budget surplus during several years of his presidency. You're just dead wrong. 
Well, it, that that is true. So However, don't don't say so do don't say that don't say that. No, a but lot that, of it had to do with the tax policy. Yes, the and by the way, no, no, it really didn't. Absolutely. No, it really then, didn't. The, the, During the years of Ronald Reagan, this country was in a huge budget deficit. It was huge, absolutely huge. And for all that talk, we're going to go to Washington and we're going to use the line item veto. I'm going to take out my veto pen and we're going to, yeah, yeah. The country just kept spending more and more. You know what the top marginal tax bracket was when Reagan took office? It was over 50%. It was 70%. Yes, I know it was. So what? Well, he cut it down to third. Like, what is it? Twenty eight percent. Yeah, and I, I, well, by the way, no, that's it. it was, actually, it was closer to thirty three percent. Okay, thirty percent. Thirty three percent. You're still benefiting from that as well. Yeah, but, but, but you see, but by the same to to by the same token, my investments are not doing as well because commodities are so expensive, oil is so expensive. We're in a recession, and a lot of that is due to the fact that the dollar is 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 doing so lousy. And why is the dollar so weak? Because we've had to continue to cut interest rates in order to prop up uh, in order to prop up uh, our ability to export products to other countries. We have to make our products cheaper because uh, there's no other way we're going to sell them to other countries unless we do that. The economy stinks. And and George Bush has cut taxes and the economy stinks. We have had taxes cut for years and the economy isn't getting better, it's getting worse. Don't you think we're in a cycle? I mean, we no, have, I don't. have ups and downs. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, all, I know, is, all like I know is all I know is when taxes smart. were higher, the cycle was up. And when taxes were lower, the cycle is down. Now, I'm not saying we should go back to 70 or 50 or 40 percent taxes. Well, that's what Barack Brock wants, 39.3 percent or whatever. 39.6, which is what it was before Bush was elected. I already paid 39.6 percent. But at the end of the year, I had more money because my investments did better. And my investments did better because the dollar was stronger, because we had a budget surplus, because the government didn't have to borrow all this money. You know, you don't understand the economy, John. And, uh, Actually, I it, do. and I what mean, really I matters at the end of the year saying. is how many dollars I'm left with. I don't care if it's because of taxes or because, I don't care what the reason is. At the I end of the have year, I have a lot more investments than a lot of people. I don't have as many investments as you are, so I don't have as much tax shelters to. Yeah, well, if you don't right have now. the investments, you probably are not in the top of the ta- not in the top tax bracket anyway. So I it doesn't relate. To- income goes. I well, am. As why don't you have goes. any investments? Why? Yeah, why? I do. Not as much as you do. I mean, well, but fine. That, most people don't have as much as I do, but you probably yeah, I have, have two houses too, Tom. Great. So, but the point no. is, if you don't have any investments, uh, you're, you're doing something wrong. Well, I mean, I wouldn't want to be in the stock market right now, would you? I am in the stock market. Well, I hope you're buying gold. <laughs> I uh, I have a precious metals mutual fund. I have an energy mutual fund. I have two commodities mutual funds, and I have stock funds. Well, sounds like you, you know, you got I'm, darn good arguments. I'm right? hedged every which way. But I'm telling so. you, uh, believe me, I know that I would be taxed more. But I don't care about that if at the end of the year my bottom line is fatter as it was in the 90s. Well, I still think we're in a cycle. And uh, I don't care who's in office. I mean, his party. Yeah, the cycle is the when Republicans get in, they lie and say they're going to cut spending. Then they raise spending. You're, you're correct on that, and, and there are a lot of people that are pissed off about that. Well, I yeah, a- after they too. voted for Bush twice, they say they're pissed off about it. And those same people who vote for McCain who will do the same thing again. Well, don't you think, too, though, that um, our enemies might be less afraid of, of, of Barack versus McCain? Let me tell you something. After the debacle in Iraq, our enemies are less afraid of us because we screwed up in Iraq. Well, I mean, I, we, 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 lately, I, it seems like we, are remember mission, do you remember mission accomplished? Remember that? That was off major combat. Do you remember the, mission accomplished? You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, guess what? We're still in Iraq. Government. We're still no, there. Government. We are impotent. We are impotent. Only because we don't use our big guns. Doesn't you know matter that. what the reason is. We are impotent. Bush had a majority in Congress and he was a Republican for many years and we are impotent. And people around the world know it. I've traveled around the world, and I'm telling you, the rest of the world knows we ain't what we used to be. So I don't see how having Barack Obama is going to make things any worse. In fact, when I was in France, they were saying nothing but great things about Barack Obama. Nothing but great things. I still think he's a lot not more naive, though. Don't you? 
than who? George Bush? Than than uh, McCain. Who's more naive than George Bush? I'm talking about McCain. We're oh, not, McCain. George Bush isn't running for... You voted for George Bush. What's that? You voted for George Bush. Of course I did. I didn't want my taxes to go up. Well, but again, there's more to life than just whether your taxes go up. The, you, know, you have low taxes and the economy stinks. It well, stinks. In the 70s it stinks. It. it also well, stunk in the 70s. With, the by the way, that. it stunk in the 70s with Gerald Ford and Richard Nixon ran it too. So what, I mean, or have you ever heard it? By the way, check your history if you don't remember it. Ever hear of the button that said win, which stood for whip inflation now? That was Gerald Ford, a Republican. You go look that up and get back to me. 1-800-5800-TOM. You know, I again, I would never waste my time working for Air America for $50,000 a year. And this is why. Okay. Much rather make an eight-figure salary or a seven-figure salary and uh, sit here talking about boobs <laughs> instead of talking to boobs. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do that, too. Let's say <laughs> Eric. Eric has nothing to say about politics, but what did you want to say here, Eric? Yeah, one second. Actually, I'm at work. Yeah, Eric and Joe, everything's called for with you. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at work. <laughs> I listen to you every day. Uh, Monday through Friday, while I'm at work, make my day go faster. But well, you guys are talking about uh, that toilet paper on the toilet stalls. I've, I've been doing that for the last it's about two years. That's so funny that you guys are talking about it. You know, you've been doing that. Yeah. I uh, see. So you're yeah. content. You're concerned. That Watch your mouth, yeah. Ron. The hey, hey, hey. We're on the air. Yeah. I Don't be an idiot. It. You know, I'm going to the restroom. You know, and. um and you don't want people, uh, I, so you have a bunch of pervs you work with? They all want to peek in on you? Uh, uh, not necessarily. Do a number two? Huh? Not necessarily. You know, I just want your privacy. So you go in there and you first drape uh, about a five-foot piece of toilet paper over the door just yeah. in case someone might want to peek in. Yeah. Okay. I've done that before. I'll bet you have. Have you seen the photo? Uh, Dean posted it on our MySpace page. No, I haven't. Actually, I'm at work, but I'll, ch I'll probably check it out later. Check that out. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, um, what's the best way to invest money? If, I, if, I'm, if I'm sitting on money, what's the best way to invest it? Because uh, one, the one way I have, I put it, uh, a couple of money, 10000 in each account for CD, CD accounts. And I guess we're going interest, like a 3.4 interest rate on it. And then I could touch it within like seven, uh, after seven months. You want to know how to double your money? Yeah, I want to know how to double my money. Fold it. <laughs> Thank you. What, 800 5 800 Tom? <laughs> yeah, I have it in four separate accounts. Well, that's, that, that's a good plan. <laughs> that's an investment plan. Get, get Warren Buffett on the phone. I wonder if he's thought of that. Put your money in four separate accounts. Um, let's say hello here to Tracy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how are you? And I Hi. Know you, is that a question or is that a... <laughs> but I do care. Well, that's great. I'm doing great. I am calling because I am, you know, I'm not a feminist. I mean, I, I believe that, you know, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if someone had a gun to my head. <laughs> because I think that just because she's riding on her husband's coattails doesn't mean that she's fit to run the office. And I wouldn't vote for, I would vote for a, for a homeless person before I'd vote for her. A homeless person, is that so? I just, I don't like I, I hear, don't like I, her I hear Barack Obama wants Ed McMahon to be a running man. He wants her to be a running man? Never mind, go ahead, I'm sorry, Tracy. Oh, I didn't even hear you. I'm sorry. My phone kind of No, came it's out. okay. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to vote for Barack. Um, I don't like McCain. I think not that I don't think he's smart. I just think he's too old. <laughs> McCain is too old. Well, he's, he's going to be the oldest person that's ran for office. Well, and, uh, beyond that, the guy's a loose cannon. He's... Yeah, I, he, I, 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 never mind my personal experience with the guy. You know, after you spend a couple of years in captivity, you might be a little cranky now and then. 
Well, I'd be cranky too if someone shot me. <laughs> I didn't know. Was he shot? I didn't even know about that. Yeah, he, I think, I believe he was like tortured, like, oh. um, in like, I, I can't remember exactly per se what actually happened to him, but I know he was tortured for like days on end. No, no, he was, he was a captive. He was uh, a hostage. No, yeah, I know he was a hostage, but I think that they actually tortured him. Why, they shot him? Torture doesn't usually involve shooting people. It usually involves, you know. I'm not 100 I mean, Waterboarding I, I and other great saying, stuff that the Republicans endorse. If I don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? But, right. again, I would no more vote for her than a bullet in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that could be arranged. <laughs> not that I would do it, but hey. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Chris, d Dad, how you doing? Doing okay, son. Excellent, excellent. Hey, I wanted to call in, one, uh, to, to talk a little bit about, about New York, but we can talk about that later because I wanted to, to make a comment on, uh, on what you were talking about as far as uh, one of your callers that, that called about taxes. Uh, historically, a Democrat in office has actually raised capital gains tax, so aren't you kind of moving backwards in, in, in that sense? Is, wh is what? Uh, generally, a Democrat in office has raised the capital gains tax. So what you're making on your stocks and on your mutual funds is actually going to be taxed more. Do you remember Do you remember how well the stock market did in the 1990s? Were you um, here? Absolutely. absolutely. I actually worked for, for Major Wirehouse, um, for a major investment firm. So, you, of course, you, you, you were uh, broke probably at that time because the economy <laughs> was so awful and the stock market was doing so lousy. Wait, what are we talking about? Late nineties or early nineties? The nineties. Anything 90s after nineteen ninety three when when Bill Clinton took office? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah, I, I was. How was the stock market doing at that time? Uh, well, it wasn't doing so hot. Oh, really? <laughs> I guess you missed the dot com era. I guess you missed. Uh, oh no 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 no! Now the dot com era didn't start until nineteen ninety five, and actually went through. I said the nineties, you moron! I didn't pinpoint it to a particular day. Don't you try to escape from me here? You know I have you up against the wall. You know I do. Bill Clinton was the president, and the stock market was going through the roof, and you know it. Yeah, but isn't that you're talking? That's post hoc ergo proctor hoc, man. You're talking it's what? about something that, and you're talking about something that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the other. If you want, to actually, blame, I, actually, it does. And if you knew anything about the economy and economics, and I've read a lot of books on this subject, read a lot of interviews, watched a lot of interviews, paid a lot of attention to this subject, I'm a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that it isn't all about what percentage of your income is taken in taxes because there's other things afoot here. Absolutely. Because if you have low taxes, but the dollar isn't worth crap, it doesn't matter if you have low taxes. Yeah, but you know, if you're going to blame anybody on that problem, then blame California for the... for the, the California the is one of 50 states. Uh, exactly, but the housing boom and the housing crisis that we are having now... Is is directly related to what's happened in the last five years, especially here in California. Again, you know, you 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 are you are, you are dancing as fast as you can, but the reality is, you know as well as I do, the stock market went through the roof in the 1990s. Bill Clinton raised taxes in the 1990s. Lots of people made their fortunes in the 1990s. We're now seeing the uh, that era going away. You know, Starbucks now, which was a big company uh, in the 90s, what, going down uh, the toilet. Well, a lot of other companies from the 90s, but in the 90s, people were making money hand over fist, and I was one of them. Not so. If you can't federal, remember that. What was the Federal Reserve doing in the late 1990s? They were raising interest rates. Were they not? I, I, I'm not talking about that. I am talking about taxes. Okay. Taxes were raised. We had a budget surplus. Mm -hmm. The dollar was not in the tank. That's, no, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. So, but yeah, the reason why the dollar... You have is this idea that it's all about low taxes is, is as naive as no, George I, W. Bush. It's as naive as he is because I the fact is low taxes are not the only thing. You, your dollar has to be worth something. And the dollar is a joke. It's a joke. But why is the dollar not worth anything? The it dollar has to do with is the fact a, that the Federal Reserve has lowered interest rates. It has to do with the fact that we have a half a billion dollar budget deficit every single year. It has to do with that. If you don't understand that, you need to go back to school, sir. Jesus. Yes, I once did a show like this, and I'll never do it again. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's well, the Taylor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Taylor. Um, what's up, dude? I'm, I'm 19, and I'm a college student, and I have a few questions. First right. of all, I, I, I'm really curious to know why, like, it seems like a lot of Americans are convinced that Barack's a Muslim, 
Yeah, it's always on the the TV, the radio, the news, like you know, like everything. But he's a like a Christian, you know. He's always talking about his pastor, and like I don't understand why people like where they get the association that Barack's a Muslim if he's always attending, you know, church. Because you, you these, because first of all, because his name sounds Muslim to idiots who don't know any better. Correct. And uh, because let's face it, uh, there are people in the political world who are trying to smear Barack Obama. And they like you to believe he's on the no-fly list. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. Now, um, I have one more question. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's. Oh, hang on, I forgot it. Um, <laughs> we don't have all day, son. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I had a comment I wanted to make about your whole Barack Obama idea. Yes. But what's interesting is the United States actually has a long history of favoring black men over white women. In fact, when you look back at the uh, 15th Amendment, black men were given the right to vote ahead of white women. And this infuriated them because they didn't get the right to vote until the 1920s. And a main plank of the whole women's suffrage movement was, why is it that a black man can vote before a white woman? And so the, the whole women's movement was horribly, horribly racist. And so it's for like... Uh, since the 1870s, there's been... And by the of, way, didn't we see some of that in Hillary Clinton's campaign? Exactly. When the National Organization of Women in New York came out with that big spread about, you know, why are we favoring men over women? It, it had several, several tinges to the, the women's suffrage movement and the issues of race back in the... And in the when Hillary movement. Clinton made that comment that she's supported exactly. by... I'm supported by hardworking people. White yeah. people. You know, that, that they, I mean, it came right out. There it was. Some like it. one 800 Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Oh, yeah. From Hollywood, it's Tom Likas at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of the program. All right. Barack Obama's the nominee. America hates women politicians so much they, they chose a black guy. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Uh, I hate to interrupt the uh, Barack Obama adoration party here, but uh, mm. you're talking about George Bush being naive and ignorant. Yes, uh, yes. yes uh, are, 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 you, are you truly that ignorant about John McCain and his background? And, and, well, I'm, and, I know John McCain better than you do, sir. I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, and I've had personal experience with John McCain. Okay, why, why that's why I know so much hostage? about him. Why are you saying he was a hostage? Was he not a prisoner of war? Whichever. It's the same difference. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So, doesn't so matter. Did you get lost on the way to K- Did you get lost on the way Did you get down. lost on the way to KFI? What are you doing here? What are you even calling a show like this? Well, I was trying I was trying to hopefully uh, enlighten Why it. why are you listening to this show? I mean, the fact is there's plenty of AM radio for guys like you to call up and agree with each other. Why are you calling here? Well, what, 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 tell me what is good about Barack Obama. What is he? I don't have to tell you what's good about him. I don't care if you like Barack well, Obama or not. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care. I am not here trying to convince you to vote for. I couldn't care less. That's the difference between this and a political oh, talk show. I boy. couldn't, unlike Sean Hannity and all the guys that you follow, I don't do sit here. I, I believe, Hannity. I know who you, you follow. A lot of assumptions. I know who you follow. And the bottom line here is that I don't take orders from any political party. I don't belong to a political party. And Frankly, I don't care who you vote for, and I'm not here to well, convince you, you to vote for anybody. Why do you want a damn man that served his country? What? Why do you want to just give utter damnation to a man that served his country? What do you mean utter damnation? I'm just not going to. You're, you're belittling. I will you're never you're vote for him in a million years because I think the man is a, just a son of a bitch and a bastard who tried to get me, who tried to get me, he tried to get me fired. He tried to get me fired from my job. I will never in a million billion years, I don't care if he was a prisoner of war for 150 years, I will never vote for him, ever. I don't think that gives him qualification to be a better president than the next guy, but I just still, you refer to the fact that we waterboard, we this and everything we else. We do. He, he, and McCain he, support- he is physically disfigured from the time he served as a president. What does that have war. to do with anything? Why do you, why do you why do you have not a kind word to say at least about Because he's a bastard. Because he's a bastard. That's why. 
That's why he's a bastard. That's my well, opinion. Know, he's my, a bastard. My parents, my parents did things to me as a child and, and did again, to me that I, I don't, hated him for at the time. Again, I don't Some care if you vote for him. I, here's the difference between me and a political talk show. Go vote for him. I couldn't care less. I'm not trying to convince you're, you to do anything. A political talk show. You're talking about Obama and this, Hillary This Clinton. Today I'm anything doing else? it. We you never talk about that. politics. It's so rare on this program. I happen to express an opinion about this because Obama, it's historic, whether you like it or not, is the first African-American nominee of a major your party in the United States. It's never happened before. So today I'm talking about it, but I won't be talking about it tomorrow or even next week. Well, I, I don't care who you vote for. I couldn't care less who you vote for. I couldn't care less. Go ahead and vote for John McCain. Go waterboarding for the next eight years. Go right ahead. If we're going to talk about Barack Obama... You just go out there and keep the troops, go to Iraq, keep us a half a billion dollar budget deficit every year. You go for it. You go, girl. That's fine with me. I couldn't care less. Let's, if we're going to talk about okay, let's talk about Barack Obama. I don't care. What? What? Some, well, you're talking about Barack Obama on your silly ass little program because he's got what an IQ positive, of three digits, which which we Barack haven't had Obama. in the White House in a long time. That's it. End of story. It has nothing to do with what his politics are. It's about time that somebody with a brain was at the White House. And Barack Obama's intelligence is higher than anybody else. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And, and and you you claim that that uh, John McCain is ignorant. And what, John what McCain and John McCain is of average intelligence, and John McCain is a is a carpet bagger, uh, like a carpet bagger, just like Hillary Clinton, who moved from Illinois. Hillary Clinton moved uh, all around the country and finally plopped herself in New York and ran for Senate. Uh, John McCain moved from Illinois to Arizona so he could run for run for Congress and the later the Senate. These people are carpet baggers. They're career politicians. They're the same old thing. And people are tired of the same old thing. Barack, and Barack's not. Nope. Barack, Barack didn't ply his political trade using all the influence of, of the churches there and everything else. Oh, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, he had that silver spoon. and Yeah, please. You know what? You should go call Dennis Prager or whatever one of those shows you follow. You know what I mean. All those AM shows where people like you with the... I just got off work and I heard your silly little show. Well, then you don't have to listen. You know what? Go to AM radio. You just go to AM radio where you belong. You and the rest of the the right-wing nuts. Go to AM radio and you can all call Michael Reagan and talk about how you agree with the last caller. You agree with the last 10 callers said. You agree with the host said. You agree with that the last four hosts said all day everybody's right and then did, did, you go right ahead what are you yes, doing if I, here if I, if, I, if I were so inclined as you say then why you, would I not because you do it all that you just accidentally tripped over this show but you you call in just like one of the callers to these shows like the show I heard a few weeks ago one of these conservative AM talk shows where some guy was calling going listen? hello oh yes I, I listen to all radio because I'm in the radio right. business yes I do and a guy called in he said uh, yeah hello uh, whoever was filling in for Rush Limbaugh I don't know who it was he i'm i I, the government is trying to take away our incandescent light bulbs and i'm stocking up on the incandescent light bulbs i I, i'm buying cases and cases of them because the government's gonna take away our these people are nuts and then all the commercials for investing in gold bullion and everything you're just a bunch of paranoid nuts you you should be there with your brethren there on am radio it's amazing amazing that's where you you belong belong. that's where you belong yes i know you're the yeah i know i know you're you're a black man. Me. You're the head of the NAACP. Sure you are. Yes. Well. I've had enough. <laughs> That's why I left AM radio, you creep. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Flash Friday is two days away. Tune in Friday, June 6th, two days from now, beginning at 3 p.m. Pacific time. As we begin Flash Friday, where men turn their headlights on across North America and women take their tops off. Show us what they got. It's coming this Friday and all summer long on the Tom Likas Show. It's this Friday, Flash Friday this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Yeah, we don't normally talk about politics, but hell. Barack Obama, Democratic nominee, first black guy to be the Democratic nominee or the Republican nominee. Or Wow. It's amazing stuff. Manny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. Hey, um, long time listener, first time caller. I just, I, I totally understand this is your show. 
And I also understand you do not like people to talk over you, and you don't like to talk over people. But I'm, in this case, here's you, the difference. I, I, I am the boss. This is my I show. I can, I, I can talk show. over anybody I like. And if somebody decides they want to start screaming and uh, taking up too much airtime uh, because it's my show, I have the right to uh, shut them down. And I will. I, I understand. But then again, you also told him to, to start calling an AM radio station because you don't talk right? politics. Well, he called you because today... How does he know I'm talking... Ta but, but how would he know I'm talking about politics if he listens to AM radio? What's he doing listening to this show? Just the same thing I'm doing, Tom. No, I'm no, it's not. No, I'm, it's I'm not. No, it's I'm not. Listening. He's 50. He's over 50 years old. He's not a regular listener. He tuned in thinking this is just another political talk show, which it's not. Okay. Well, I, I thought he was doing the same thing I do. I listen to you every day on my way Wait, home. Keep it up. Like, you know, and... I'm like, you know what? I should call him. He, he, he always wants us to respect you, not to talk over you, and you're not letting this guy talk. Because it's I, I my... You what, don't understand. I I, I'm, not, I'm not shy about it. It's my show. My name yeah, is on it. I totally understand, but I want to get... Uh, you know, I don't have to take any calls. Do you know I've done entire shows without taking a single call? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't need calls. So, so you're a guest here, and just like if you were a guest in my home, I have the right to say, "All right, get out of my house." I understand. You're you're in my, you're in my turf now. Exactly. So yes, I will. I'm the boss here. Anyone who doesn't like it, tell you what. There's no gun to your head to call in. But when he insisted on talking about politics, and you said I'm not going to talk about John McCain, you, and he said, "All right." You're talking about Obama? Let's start talking about No, Obama. I but the point you is I'm not I I cuz here's what I don't want to continue. I am not here to convince him to vote for Obama or anybody else. I couldn't care less who he votes for. Couldn't okay. care less. I'm not here trying to proselytize anybody. I am not here to try to get anybody to vote for whatever candidate I'm voting for. Right. I don't care. That's what they do on AM radio. Uh, right. Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity sit by the fax machine in the morning waiting for the White House to send them talking points. Then they go on the air and they say whatever the party is saying that day. I couldn't care less who you vote for, what you think. I don't care. But what we, him and I, I understand maybe him and I want to know the same thing. You, you're telling us what you think about Obama. We want to hear it and we want to tell you what we think about Obama. Great. Tell me. When well, will that be? Did, when will that be beginning? I, I, I don't want to talk about that. But you, you just you said you do. You that. just said you do. No, I just said. Uh, when I, you I, figure I, out what you want to talk about, call back. I want to tell you what I think of Obama. Okay, tell me. Well, I want to talk about that. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Danielle on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Daddy. Hi, dear. <laughs> I was wondering what you thought. Well, let me just say, um, I was originally going to vote for Barack because I just thought, I'm not ready for a woman president, and I don't know who else is. They have way too many hormones, and especially one in menopause. I, I was wondering what you thought, if maybe she would be a safer choice because Bill would be in the house with her. And he, I thought he did a, a great job when he was... Do you really off. think Bill would be doing anything except uh, boning uh, interns and stuff? <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, I mean, if she needed some advice, he would be there. By the way, and speaking of hormones, i, I got to ask you this question. Do you know how to make a hormone? Do I know how to make one? Do you know how to make a hormone, yeah? No. Don't pay, don't, don't pay her. <laughs> That's a good joke. Well, I don't, and you know what? I had to tell you something else, Tom. I caught my, my ex-husband told me not to listen to you. And I just, I love you. I listen to you religiously. And it's funny, I got in his car one day and he had you on. <laughs> of course he did. He was just afraid you'd get ideas. And I think you have. Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.